Hello everyone, this is Shannon Flummerfelt from Flip Schools. This is your Understanding Improvement Series, and this particular video is designed for faculty. We're going to focus on how to examine instructional processes. This is important because if you're trying to flip your classroom, uh, you will find that questions will arise about instructional processes. So this will begin to give you some basic understandings of what a process is and how it might be used to help you to drive improvement while you're engaged in a flipped classroom. First of all, let's begin with the definition. What are processes? The Business Dictionary defines processes as a series of related procedures or protocols. So there's, there's a sequence or a series of steps or protocols that, that happen. And when those happen, they use resources. And we use resources in order to take something that's considered an input, do something with it, and convert it to an output. And that whole process, that, that whole series of steps is what's called a process. And in order to have that happen, we certainly have to use resources. We have our time um, in the classroom, preparing for the classroom. We have instructional materials, instructional support that might be needed, as well as the resources that students put into learning in the classroom. So we put all these resources out there because we're trying to obtain certain goals or outcomes. And in the case of learning in the classroom, of course, we have our instructional goals and outcomes that we're very much um, thinking about on a daily basis. So let's take a look at two typical processes that are used in a classroom. And again, these may be used in a flipped classroom or a traditional classroom. But this will give you an understanding of how to begin to look at all of the instructional processes around you to begin to understand what they are. We're going to look at two, summative student assessment and formative student assessment. The reason that we examine processes is that we are trying to understand where we can possibly drive points of improvement in those processes. So I'm going to show you a very, very simplistic um, process example here. And this is laid out as a visual, um, in a visual format so that you can see the inputs, the actual process, and the output over a given period of time. This will help you to compare and contrast the advantages and disadvantages of summative versus formative student assessment. And of course, this process of examining processes can be used with any of your instructional processes that you work with every day. So we're going to begin with inputs. So we start off with, here are the inputs when we're looking at summative student assessment. Again, summative student assessment is when we are testing students at a given point in time to try to obtain data sets in terms of what their current state is. So what happens in this particular process is that a student attends class and a teacher delivers content. Now if this were a flipped classroom, those two steps would be interchanged where a teacher could deliver the content prior to the class and then the student attends the class. In the class, the student completes class activities, and then following the class, there's homework. So all of the inputs into the assessment process, doing it summatively, are based on um, the student's um, preparation before, the activities during, and the activities that follow class. So at some point in time, the actual process is, is that a student will take a final test at some point in time. In this case, we're measuring a marking period. So let's say at the end of the marking period, the student will take a test for the, um, for the marking period. The output is, is that the teacher has a chance to assess the current state. So, you know, the student performs at 90% or 62% or, you know, gets three gold stars or, you know, whatever you're using to um, assign value to that student's performance is then given. And you're assessing that as a form of output. Now, let's contrast 
summative student assessment with formative student assessment. Again, we're considering these from the viewpoint of what do these look like as a process. And we do this because, again, we're trying to figure out what's appropriate, um, where we can drive points of improvement in our instruction. So here's how formative student assessment looks. First of all, visually you can see that formative student assessment is very different. Where summative only was one block of inputs, process, and output, over a marking period when we use formative student assessment, there are three iterations, or however many. In this case, we're going to use three. So let's take a look at what happens. First of all, um, a student again will attend class, a teacher will deliver content, or in a flipped classroom, those are switched around. The content is delivered before class, the student attends class, there's a homework and the class activities, just like we had in the summative example. In this case, the process is that there are a series of tests over a given period of time. In this marking period, there are three tests. So the first process is that student will take the first test. Again, the output's the same. The teacher is assessing the student's current state. What do they know? What have they mastered? You know, do they get a 90% or a 62% or three gold stars or, you know, whatever the assessment is? Then we take that output and that feeds into a whole nother iteration here of um, testing for formative student assessment. So again, we have either the traditional or the flipped model of delivering content and attending class. In this case, the input changes up a little bit because the teacher will provide some kind of intervention or enrichment based on what the output was from the previous process cycle. Again, class activities and homework. Now we hit the second iteration here of the process where there's a second test. The output this time is very different in formative student assessment because now the teacher is assessing the student's progress from test one to test two. So it's a different type of analysis and a different type of work that a teacher engages in for the second iteration on the output. Then we move into a third iteration perhaps and again you have either the flipped or the traditional model of delivering content and attending class. Again, based on the output from the second iteration, there's intervention, enrichment, some kind of differentiation, personalization that might be needed. Student completes the class activities and homework again, takes a third test, and again, the output in this case is the teachers assessing the student's progress, not the current state, but what's the difference between the first and second, the second and third iterations of testing. So you can see here, just in terms of using process-based approaches to assessment options that you have as a classroom teacher, you can begin to lay these out and perhaps understand them in a way that you never have seen them or thought about them before. The point of this, of course, is to, again, be able to make good decisions in a, as a classroom teacher, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate in terms of assessment methods. If you're interested in more information on flipping classrooms or on continuous improvement, go to the FLIP Institute website. The institute can be found at theflipinstitute.com. Thank you very much.